John Steele Adventurer. Hello, friends. This is John Steele. Most of us at one time or another in our lives have had to face a hard decision. Our story this week concerns a man who faced a cruel choice to break the only promise he'd ever sworn to keep or to sacrifice the lives of those who depended on him. I call this yarn the Honorable Ones. They say the path of least resistance leads to destruction. Maybe that's part of the reason James Guilford tossed over what might have been a brilliant career as a brain surgeon and ended up in China with a reputation no one would want pinned on them. It began a short time after the Chinese Communist Army captured Hankow. Some Americans and Europeans had stayed on in the city for various reasons, mostly business. But Jim Guilford didn't have their connections and got pushed around. That, combined with what he saw going on and wasn't able to do anything about, made him hate the new People's Republic. So when he heard a rumor that an American was flying out to Japan, he pulled the few strings he had and got himself passage. Jim thought that maybe getting back to the States would help him pull himself together and enable him to make a fresh start. The plane took off just before dawn. To his surprise, several other people were huddled on the floor in the pitch black cabin. Jim recognized their names as those of popular business people in the international sector. Well, feel better now we're underway, right, Benny? Yeah, Pete. Lots of good contacts washed down the drain, though. Like losing your life blood, huh? Nah, salesmen are just like your reporters. We soon develop new ones wherever we go. Right, Mr. Tillman? Oh, well, that's always a talent I look for, Mr. Bigger. But seldom find. No, dear. Well, it's true. Certainly was a lucky break getting this plane out. I wonder how it was managed. Influence, I suppose. Oh, I heard some of the big shots were bought off. When you called me, Pete, and told me about it, I didn't think there was a chance. Told you it was a sure thing, didn't I? Yes, but when we had to give our names and occupations to the officials, I figured that was curtains for Betty. Why? They don't like American reporters. <laughs> they don't like any of us, right, fella? Hey, mister. Uh, me? Yeah. What's that? They don't like any of us, right? Yeah. What's your name? Uh, you don't know me. Well, what is it? James. First or last? Doesn't matter. I don't know anyone named James in Hancock, except... Uh, <laughs> Pete thinks he should know everyone there. Paid off, didn't it? Yeah. What's your line, Jim? Other much? No. Retired? Yeah, in, in a way. You are very fortunate. Oh! What's the matter, dear? This plane. Oh, oh but darling... Horrid! I... Well... I'm nearly freezing. Yeah, we are. Right. We should have brought some blankets. You wouldn't think of that beforehand. Well, there were so many things. Leave everything up to me. Well, perhaps there's some in the plane. It's too dark to see. Yeah. Here, take my coat, dear. And have you catch uh, pneumonia? I, I have a blanket. Oh, lucky guy. Yeah. The women can share. Really? It. Yes. Thanks. Here you are. Oh, my foot! <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Tillman. It's Everything so dark. happens to me. Oh, come on, Mrs. Tillman. We'll wrap it around our legs. Arthur should have thought to bring one for me. Oh, thank you, Mr. Uh... It's okay. Well, we're still lucky in the rest. You said Getting it. out of China now. And this disgusting slaughter. Well, Chinese have a right to decide who they want to govern them. You know very well their peaceful means, Arthur. Everyone is not an idealist like you, Ma. No. Well, what do we care anyway, as long as it doesn't affect us? It will. Not me. No. My business is better than ever. Well, you'd sell to either side. Doesn't make any difference to you. Well, that's playing it smart, right, Jim? You like the Reds? Well, never gave it much thought. I hate them. Oh, oh, what was that? It hit an airport. It's rough weather. This is the most terrible plane I've ever been in. Well, Arthur. we couldn't be sure. You could have seen to it. It'll be better now that daylight is oh, coming. Oh, yes, it is getting light. Yeah. Now we can see who we're dripping over, right, Jim? Uh, well. Dr. James Guilford. I knew his voice was familiar. You should have told us. I, uh... Well, Doctor. Uh, I say, Pete, uh, are you returning to the States? Well, uh, <clears throat> don't think so. You'll, um, you'll have a great deal to write about, Betty, when we get to Japan. Yeah. It'll be fascinating business, being a newspaper woman, I mean, sometimes. What are you going to do, Arthur? Well, I haven't completely made up my mind yet. Well, I got a spot I've been thinking about. Oh, yeah? Should be a great place for my business. Well, where's that? Uh, Pete? Yeah? There's another plane over there. Uh -huh. It's coming toward us, I'm sure. Probably a nationalist. Let's go. No, I can see the markings. Well, we're still over the mainland. He's signaling. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Oh, dear, he's going to run into us. Look out! Oh! It's all right. Well, dear. how do you know? He's coming back. Yeah. Ow! Oh! He hit. I don't know. 
Joe, can you help me? Dr. Gilbert. Take a look, Doc. Uh, all right. Is, is she... Has fainted. Not hit, huh? No. Oh, Mort. My dear. Mort. We're going down. Yeah, we got her. But they gave us clearance. I'll see if there's any water for her, Mr. Tillman. <laughs> The situation was suddenly very clear to Jim. As soon as the others thought they needed him, it was a different story. Forgot how they'd acted when they first recognized him, like he was going to rub off on them. But Jim couldn't blame them entirely. He felt it wasn't enough to just admit to himself he'd made a mistake in throwing his life away. He had to convince the others somehow. And Jim knew it was going to be a tough job. After they landed on an airstrip, they were crowded into a small shed while Pete Vicker went off somewhere to find out what was wrong. Jim was over in the corner by himself when Pete came back and the rest mobbed him. Well, what's up? Who'd you see, Pete? Are we going on now? Take it easy. Take it easy. I couldn't find out anything. What? Just checked our papers. Who did? Some general. Well, there's nothing wrong with our papers. Well, it didn't seem well, to be. Well, can we go on now? No. What? Not yet, anyway. I trust you told him he had no right to detain us. No, I didn't. Wouldn't do any good, Maud. But we were promised safe passage, right? And we're safe so far. Arthur? Yes, sir. You go see this general. Oh, but dear... Tell him you shall protest to the American embassy. I'll be You heard me. There aren't any embassies here, Mrs. I Tillman. don't care. Well, there's nothing we if could... If you don't, I shall. You'll stay right here. I'll do nothing of You the heard time. me. Well, of all the nerve. I just don't understand. Just a cigarette, Doc. What down for? Oh, Thanks. Might as well relax. What's up? Who knows? Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, more like hostages. Did uh, Pete ask him if we could go on? Yeah, no go. Oh. Wouldn't give a reason. Typical. Yeah. No rush. None. You ever know an Oriental that didn't take his time? Nope. Something we can learn from. What? Patience. Oh, that's true. There's always plenty of time for everything. You think so, Doctor? Yes. Well, maybe that explains some things. What? Oh, nothing, Jim. It's a hard lesson for Americans to learn. You have? I hope to. Know something, Doc? Well? You and I ought to have a long talk sometime. Oh, I have had too much publicity already. Mm -mm. This would be strictly off the record. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't think you'd be here. Oh, Mr. Doctor James Gilford. Gilford? You only send him follow? No. Uh, I'm James Guilford. You go along come with Ho Sang. Where? General Fu Wong. He wants you, he make talk. Why? He say bring you. Tell him I don't want to see him. What's do? That's what you think. Well, now, for Jim, you refuse? You. Yeah. You'd better go, Jim. Why? You know why. You're crazy, you gotta go. You cop. Let me go. Cope. You'll get us all in touch, Doc. I don't want anything to do with these guys. It's probably just something he wants to check on. You can't accomplish anything by resisting them. No. Go on, Doctor. Maybe we can get away from here then. You come, no? Okay. I still don't like it. Doctor, General. Won't you be seated, Doctor? I'll stand. As you wish. What do you want? You American. Well? Always in a rush to get to the point. Anything wrong with that? Well, that depends on the point of view. There's no sense wasting time. No. You are a doctor. War is better. You studied medicine? Yeah. The knowledge remains? Sometimes. You are a brain specialist, to be exact. How'd you know? Your reputation is well known to me. Yeah, to everyone. True. How'd you know I was on the plane? We had word to permit your plane free flight. Which you haven't done. Also true. And when your superiors find they out... They shall do be... nothing. Your attitude is not understandable, Dr. Gilford. What do you mean? You have lived several years in my land of your own choice. So? Yet you seem not to like us. Just those you represent. Oh. Well, that makes no difference. What do you want? An operation performed... Then you don't want me. I do. I haven't practiced in years. Yes, I know. You know a lot. Thank you. Then you know the life I've led doesn't help you to be a skilled surgeon. Perhaps. Sometimes thoughts of what may happen otherwise can cause one to be successful. What do you mean? To fail would prove disastrous. What kind of operation? An extremely delicate one. 
to relieve a pressure upon the brain. Who's the patient? Myself. No. You refuse? Yeah. Sang. <coughs> Let go. Stop. I won't stop. You will reconsider? No. You're being very foolish. Maybe. None of your fellow passengers shall continue their journey until the operation is done. Doesn't worry me. It might not be safe for their persons to remain with my troops for a long period. They do not care for Americans. You got my answer. You have no feelings toward them? Let's say I feel stronger about something else. I understand. Good. You are stupid, Doctor. Maybe. But I'll win in the long run. Oh, really? Yeah. I've been sizing things up while I stood here. So? I can see what condition you're in. One arm paralyzed. Slowly advancing. You are smarter than I suspected. You'll be dead in a week. Then we'll go. Insolence! Get yourself another doctor, one of your own. If there were one, do you think I would have bothered with you? No. You have a special skill. So I hold all the strings. Not all, Dr. Gilford. You can be persuaded. Yeah. Thank. <coughs> we have our methods, Doctor. No good. Sang. Pick him up, Sang. No. This is not one of our more subtle methods, Doctor, as you no doubt know. No good. I have little time, Doctor. I have plenty. You will operate. I wouldn't help if you were the last. Thank you. You will not speak so to me. I kill you with my own hands first. I'll remember that, Doctor, when you perform the operation. Don't hold your breath. My men should be properly informed in case anything should happen to me. You might as well get it over with now while you can enjoy it. Take him out of here, Sang. Yeah. Do, don't you? No, Sang. Take him back to his friends. Huh? Make sure they know why they are being held, Sang. Oh. I'm sure he will find our company most comforting. Got it all figured. Haven't you? General Wong knew the others better than Jim did. At first, they were embarrassed because he held their lives in his hand and they tried to cover it up with unsettled cracks about Jim doing an operation. But as the hours wore on, they started getting restless, cooped up in one small shed. They gathered in a tight little group and whispered, looking at Jim Guilford. Finally, Maud Tillman couldn't restrain herself any longer. We can't stay here forever just because he won't do no. it. No. Dr. Gilford. My answer is no. But what right have you got to refuse? My own. Well, you've undoubtedly had much worse patients. So what? I don't see why you should be so particular at our expense. I don't care what you think. They'll, they'll kill us. He's bluffing. He threatened that? Yes. Oh. He wouldn't dare violate the orders of his commanding officer. Well, it's a simple and logical request he's made of you, Doctor. No. I thought that a doctor pledged himself to save lives, a sacred obligation. I'm not a doctor anymore. You can do it? No. Why? It's none of your business. Well, if they're going to bump me off, it's mine. You'll die before then. Is that serious? Yes. We got a right to know why you won't. Yes, we I won't do it, that's all. Why? You must know I made myself a promise. And we get knocked off because you made yourself a promise. You wouldn't understand. You're going to do it if I have to take it. Let go of me. Who do you think you are? Let me go. You crazy. Right, you won't get anywhere this way, Pete. Yeah. You're not going to get anywhere anyway. Why, you... Shut up! General Wong wants you answer, Mr. Doctor. It's no. He says take women in half hour. You'll not do it. No! He can't bluff me. You say no? Yeah. In half hour. Dr. Gilbert, certainly you're not... Let me alone. I'm not thinking of myself. <laughs> but the women, you can't let I them... I can't help that. No? No. Besides, I don't think it'll come to that. Well, we can't take that chance. Listen. Were you ever married, Doctor? What's that got to do with well, it? Were you? No. Then you wouldn't understand, but... Leave me alone. I just... I don't want to hear any more about it. Leave me alone, do you hear? Leave me alone. I'm sorry, Jim. Hmm? I said I'm sorry. You're going to try and change my mind, too? Nope. Just thought you might want someone to talk to. Cigarette? Thanks. Haven't got a match. Yeah. Thanks. Do you think I owe them anything after Don't the... Don't talk about it. No, I want to talk to you. Okay. Do I owe them anything? 
I don't think that's the point. What is? They're frightened now. Nobody looks good when they're frightened. No. But it's more than that. What? Do you owe it to yourself? What do you mean? Look, I've heard a lot about you, Jim. Most of it was bad, but some of it was good. <laughs> Let's say you don't do the operation, and somehow or other we get out of this. What's that going to do to you as a doctor? Oh, it isn't that simple. Well, now it's my turn. What do you mean? We may all die anyway. Why? You don't know what the operation's like. No. It's serious, difficult. Well, of course. You could die on the table through no fault of mine. All he's asked is that you try. No. More? Yeah, he's fixed it so that if he dies, we get killed anyway. But he can't expect it. So I won't deliberately get rid of him. Oh. Whatever you decide, Jim, I'm not afraid. Off all by yourself, Mr. Doctor. What do you mean? It hasn't been a half hour? He says it's half hour. Take women. Oh, no! Oh, no. Wait. Boy. You do operation, Mr. Doctor? I'll try. Oh, thank you, thank you. We'll never forget this, Doctor. Thanks, Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You shouldn't have come, Betty. You couldn't do it by yourself. No. Got everything you need? Yeah. Will you be able to take it? I think so. I know you would see it my way, Dr. Gilford. Yeah. You ready? Of course. Okay. Help him on the table, Hossein. <laughs> okay, now get out. Thanks, Thais. He'll disturb the doctor. He is my insurance, miss. Yeah. Ho Sang has been fully instructed what to do if there should be an accident. Sang do, General. Well, there's always a chance that this thing might go. You see that there is not, Doctor. But he can't... Ho Sang? Yes, General. My own gun shall dispense the justice. You may start. Hold this mask, Betty. Okay. Pour some ether in. There. Now take deep breaths, Wong. I ask. He's under, Jim. I'll check him. Yeah. Stand back, Sang. Sang, watch. What's first, Jim? This scalpel. This one? Yeah. Preliminary incision. Easy, Jim. Hmm? Your hand's shaking. I don't know, Betty. What? I'm not sure. You'll do all right. I'm shaking too much. Why, you stop. How do you expect me to do anything with you poking that gun in my ribs? What do you order? Look at you. Betty. Betty. Steady, Jim. I can't do it. Yes, you can. I don't remember. I'm not sure. Take it easy. It's been so long. Think. I know you. What's first? Betty, I can't. You have to. My head. You go on. Oh, stop hanging over the doctor's shoulder. Song say you oh, go shut on. up. Come on, Jim. No. What's first? I can't, I can't, I can't. Jim! Okay. Better. Now let's go on. Yeah, all right, Betty. Preliminary incision. There. Sponge. All right. Yeah, it's good. Clamp. No, here, I'll do it. Sponge. Mm -hmm. Clamp. Yeah. Sponge. Clamp. Okay. Sponge. Clamp. Mm -hmm. Sponge. All right. Clamp. Sponge. Clamp. Wipe my forehead, Betty. Okay. Good. Pulse is dropping. What's it down to? 62. Be through with the suture in a minute. Scissors. Right. There. Pulse. 60. Take off the mask. Right. Mechanics waste. Right. There. Bandage. 
No, that's it. Hmm. Can you get your hand under his neck? I think so, sure. All right. That's good. Elastic bandage. All right. Can I hold up his head? Yeah. There. That's it. I told you you could do it. Yeah. I haven't lost your touch. I gotta sit down. General. He can't talk to you, Sang. General. Leave him alone. It was successful, wasn't it? I can't tell yet. How soon? When he comes to, if he does. General, I said no open. He hasn't come out of the ether. General, you know, breathe. Let me see. What's wrong, Jim? Nothing. He's just breathing easier. General, die. No. General, die. No, saying he's just breathing. No trick or sound. You're not. You kill him. Put that gun away. We kill you. Come. You can't leave the general now, saying. He dead. No. Go. Better do what Move. he says. No, but he. Maybe can't... we can stall for time outside. No. What was that? The general. You hear him saying? He's alive. General. It's going to be okay. Oh, oh, not dead. We're all set to go, Jim. Where are the others? Where did you expect? They're all in the plane. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. That's okay. I had to leave instructions for the general's care. I told him that. Hop in. And Betty, thanks a lot. Don't thank me, Jim. Glad that we got Hello, everyone. Going at last, huh, Pete? I understand, Betty, you're planning on going to South Korea from here. Jim, That's where I'm heading. Really? Well, we're going there, too. Oh, that a fact? So that's how it is. Please, Jim, listen. I should have known. Well, we're just trying come to... Come on up forward. Huh? Come on. It's not going to be a just trying to... I know. Wasn't worth yes, it. Yes, it was. All they were thinking about. Think was of what it did for you. Where are you going, Jim? I don't know. Well, when you get there, will you let me know? What? Yeah. Yeah. Starred as John Steele on this transcribed adventure was Don Douglas with Ross Martin, Adele Saul, Joe Helgeson, Connie Lemke, and Earl George. And of course, all names and characters heard are fictitious, and any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. But here again is John Steele. Well, friends, that's it. The honorable ones. The story of a man who learned that friendship is sometimes the masquerade of selfishness. A few months after Jim had returned to the States, he hung out his shingle again. And Betty Lavin wrote one of her best feature articles, the story of Dr. James Guilford. Well, this is John Steele. Be around next week, huh? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.